boy. I need to edit. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm you are. <laughs> I'm going to do it. All right. Get this through. Okay. Uh, we are live. Are you this, sure? Yeah. Oh, my God, Andy. <laughs> All right. This is Literary Roadhouse. One short story, once a week. I'm Anais. I'm Gerald. And I'm Andy. Okay. Why is this? It keeps telling me it's not streaming to Facebook, but I think it is. I told it to go. For some reason, Facebook thinks that the link for um, where we read the story today is a spam link, or, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's not. All right. So, um, yeah, this week we read The Library of Babel by Jorge Luis Borges. Um, you know, story put loosely. Uh, yeah, I had fun with it. Uh, we're going to discuss that, but let's talk about what it is first. So the story is written in the form of a letter by a librarian in a library that represents the universe. It's a metaphorical, a very long extended metaphor for the universe with a bunch of nested metaphors in there. And you just um, go out and assume it's a metaphor. It tells you right at the beginning, the first sentence, the first sentence tells you it's a metaphor. The universe, <laughs> which others call the library. Uh, and the, okay, all right, we can debate that, but the very last footnote also tells you not to take it literally, Andy. Okay, so <laughs> this is not literal. Um, so uh -oh. this extended metaphor slash literal infinite library, depending on your reading of the story. Um, yeah, it's basically an exploration of different um, philosophical points of view about the universe, life, religion, meaning, knowledge, and we're going to get dig into that. But one thing it is not, possibly to Gerald's chagrin, is a traditional story with a plot, a beginning, a middle, and an end. That is not what this is. This is very different from our usual fare. And that's about it. That's about what I can do for the summary, because to go any deeper would basically be giving away the discussion. So, <laughs> yeah. Giving away the plot of the story, because it's... Yeah, there's no plot. It's a letter. It's a letter that someone's writing. It's, it's a you. description. Mm -hmm. It's a description. I, I, it's a little I, bit like um, my favorite story by Thomas Ligotti, The Red Tower. Yes. Where it's like, here's this weird thing, mm -hmm. uh, except Thomas Ligotti sucks. Wow. <laughs> yep. You're still on that. I like that story. I, I like The Red Tower. Never live it down. Well, okay. It is sort of like The Red Tower in the sense that the whole quote unquote story is a description of an extended metaphor that is putting in the writer's sort of philosophical point of view and is not an actual story with a character that does something. But that's where the similarities end because Ligotti. <laughs> this one's good. So Ligotti is about the mind and it's very dark and depressing and this isn't quite there. Andy, why did you like this story? Um, yeah, well, so like, I don't know. First off, I'm just I'm all in on Georgie Borgie. Mm -hmm. you know. Pudding pie. <laughs> Pudding and pie. That's that's <laughs> what he's known for. Um what is it? It's just underlying what's important about trying to extrapolate from fixed fixed information, right? We only know this much about the world about what reality is from our finite perspectives. And so we got to, we got to build from there and all the extrapolations are completely ludicrous, but like perfectly reasonable. And it's fun to play in that. Mm -hmm. As I said, before we started recording, this is right up your alley. I'm glad I was right. <laughs> right up your alley. This is definitely an Andy's quote unquote story. Yeah. Yeah. Gerald, what did you think of the story? <laughs> Quote unquote. Um, I, <clears throat> in a way, it was it was a metaphor for my reading of it, which is a bit meta, because I felt like like the meaning of it was stretching out in front of me, and I I couldn't quite see the end of. I couldn't quite get to the end. I I I sort of read it. I must have read it five six times and, and and the the sort of real meaning of it is just just out of just out of reach and and there is no real meaning other than you know it's 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 a metaphor for 
for the universe. It, it's, but I, I did enjoy. So, you know, yeah, you're, you're right. I like my stories to have, you know, have characters and plots and 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 have a beginning and middle and an end and not just a, a few scraps of words scribbled down on a napkin or something. Um, so, I. So, but it was quite interesting to 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 grapple with the concept of infinity, because as as you know from from my, from my, my slacking earlier on today, I, I I made an attempt to calculate how many books were in the library, um, and and it and and because it's 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 a ridiculously huge number. But it is finite, so there is an end to it. There's there's a finite number of things. But it is is stupidly. I mean, I made a mistake and 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 miscalculated. But there are there are each book there are um, no each each page there are something like eighty lines. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, eight, eight, eighty lines, forty characters. Times twenty-five different so, so it's it's twenty-five to the power of three thousand two hundred, which has something like four thousand integers in the number. It, it's it's a ridiculous. But then of course that's just one page, and then there are four hundred and ten <laughs> pages. So you 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 raise that to the to the power of four hundred and ten. So it it is shoot, but it, it is finite. So it's it's quite sort of interesting. But uh, but you know that's so I I. Th Playing in the story and playing in the world and the universe is interesting. And, and Andy found the, the the website online with 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 a whole library, which is really good. I almost downloaded it, but <laughs> <laughs> I hesitated over that download button. But uh, so so it's it's sort of quite interesting. But but yeah, I I I don't know what to make of it to be honest, really. It's funny because I feel like the story is doing to you one of the goals I think the story is trying to do. Like one of the things I wrote down is like if there was a theme or a message or a succinct way to scream part, like part of what the author is trying to scream here, there's many little messages in there, but one of them is, oh God, the universe is incomprehensibly large and chaotic and we know almost nothing about it. And the tiny fraction of percent that we do know is a miracle in and unto itself. It is mostly senseless. Because remember a lot of the books are also fake. It's also false information in there as well. If you're doing every possible combination of these characters, right? So it's like it's it's mostly senseless. And the fact that anything is sensical at all is a miracle. And the fact that you think you know anything is almost crazy, right? Like it's just like this like scream. It's just like ah, it's so big and meaningless, <laughs> right? And then there's this sort of discourse into religion that follows, which is where a lot of the fun happens. Um, but that's how it starts. Like the first like page really is just like screaming into the void knowing that the void is there and it seems like it had that effect on you which is kind of the point right yes yes yeah 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 yeah, yeah but, but i think you know it, it's it, it in terms of in terms of a short story it's it's you know i, I i'm not i'm not going to recommend this to anyone <laughs> to be honest yeah but as a story, maybe not. But what about as a delightful toy, right? Um, no, because uh, because uh, it's not. It, it's it's a, a minor distraction to to the uh, to the dreadful drudgery which is modern <laughs> life. <laughs> um, it's it's a minor distraction. Of, oh, that's kind of interesting. But and and that's it. So. If if I didn't have to read it for this this podcast, then I would I wouldn't have read it. I would have looked at it and thought, yeah. I think whether or not I recommend it depends on who the person is. I think a lot of people would have fun with this sort of discourse. Andy is one of them, right? And I think a lot of people who get a lot of um, intellectual stimulation from this sort of exercise, right? Because like as you go through, you see other philosophical and religious point of views in there, and he sort of like accepts them and pooh poos other, right? right. Like. <laughs> which is really, which is funny. Like you've already established that everything here is senseless and meaningless, but yet he, the, the, the narrator is very comfortable being like the mystics say, and the way he writes it, it's like, he believes the mystics about the circular library with the circular book that is God. However, the people who went around banning some books because of their sort of religious belief, those people 
are zealots and they suck. Also, the people who went around trying to find heaven, they suck. We all know after you die, you just fall infinitely into the void, obviously, right? Like where, these distinctions, where do they come from? Uh, and that's kind of the fun part of it. Yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm not, gonna say something. What? And I, 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 I just like that the fact that that uh, one's fecal necessities are, are taken care of because that's that's important. Yeah, right. The in library was clearly designed to, to be lived in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. by some sort of monster, intelligent creator who crafted it for man's image. Right. Right. But man will eventually die, right? Also, <laughs> man is dying by suicide and pulmonary disease and all kinds of other like degradations. The more and more man knows, the more and more man sort of spins out of control and implodes on itself. So like, that's great, right? <laughs> Which is like why like his like dying wish as he writes this is, I may never know the meaning of this library slash the universe. I may never know the full truth, but I hope one human being does before we're all wiped out. I hope one person gets to experience that full truth. Yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. okay. But the thing, the thing is, whether or not one person gets to experience that full truth is already predetermined because there are significant passages of this that go to determinism, where he's like, this whole letter that I've written was already pre-written in these books anyway, since there's every possible configuration. Also, the reputation of this letter is in these books. So, like, there's heavy determinism in here as well. So, it's, it's a lot. It's just, it's <coughs> like a philosophical playground. Yeah. Right, it's got it's got all the bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and it made me look up words. Fall into tautology. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I, I've got an aversion to to looking up words because as soon as I, I say a word that I don't understand, I I get I get with the story because I think you, know, you you should write a story that people of average reasonable intelligence can understand but but it, it actually got me to look up what all these words mean which is, which is good I, I, I enjoyed that yeah peregrinations I, I love that word that's a very good word yeah. I don't know I liked it's like oh like Gerald as I was reading it I felt like okay uh I'm 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 getting two-thirds of the joke right there's like there's something else that I just is beyond me. But then like, as I mold on, it's like, Oh no, that's like the point, right? It's, it's a facade of the last, the last bit. It's like, I, I don't know what that is either, but like, look how, look how convincingly I painted. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like a roadrunner cartoon where they paint the tunnel on the rock. And like, it sure <laughs> looks like you can run through that, but there's nothing there. It's, and that's, I don't know. I respect yeah. that. That's clever. That's well done. That's neat. And it's the best way to kind of hint at the, um, you know, you run into this sometimes with like in fantasy novels or like whenever you have someone, a super intelligent character, right? Like, oh, and here's, here's this dragon and they're a hundred times more intelligent than any man or like a supercomputer that can outthink any man. But like the writer's still a person. So like, you know, you, you can't really, you can't really come up with a better plan. So you just have to use your clever writer tricks and say like, ah, yes. And he had planned that. He had calculated that. But like, you, you know, you didn't actually have to calculate anything beforehand as the writer. You just said, and then he had already known that he would do that. It's that right. kind of thing, right? It's, it's the best way to signpost and point at infinite complexity without describing that being complexity infinitely complex right 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 and 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 this whole thing he's even saying how like the letter that i am writing right now is in and of itself pointless it doesn't even come close to touching anything that is contained in these books that were presumably written by god right like there's like a a way in which like the letter is constantly refuting itself without having to refute itself by just saying everything is pointless including the thing that you are reading like just so you know but, uh, not pointless, but just pointless is the right word, meaningless. And there's a slight difference in connotation between those two words. My favorite line is, you who read me, are you so sure of understanding my language? Like, <laughs> no, man, and, I'm not. And that's when it goes into sort of like language deconstructionism, all the stuff that like Derrida talks about, or one of the things he talks about, right? Like how... Um, you can look at the same word and that word has different meanings, especially if you're coming at it from different languages, even if you're looking at the same letters, like 
oh, okay, just throw in some more like philosophical confetti in here for fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Philosophical confetti. I like that. That's a very good way of describing it. That's kind it. of what it is. Like it's like it's Ooh. just like very clearly, you know, Borges is a uh, a big consumer of philosophical texts, and he was just like like they just like scramble in his mind like confetti and it just came out in this kind of delightful kind of playground for people who read this sort of thing. I think if you have had no exposure to philosophy at all, this story would completely frustrate you because it's kind of written for other people who have at least taken philosophy 101 a little bit. You know what I mean? Like this isn't written for just anyone. I think not that not that somebody who didn't take philosophy 101 wouldn't get something out of it. They would, but there's a little bit of signposting here where you already need to know some of the characters to fully get some aspects of the joke and you'll still miss a lot of it, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a little bit of like, you need to be in the know to catch some of the inside jokes. Yeah. And, and, and there's this, and yet he, 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 he grounds the whole story quotation marks um, in the library and in the, the mechanics and the physical um, uh, manifestation of a library. And I, lo I love the bit where um, that someone found something, someone found two pages of homogenous lines and within a century, the language was established, a Samoyedic Lithuanian dialect of Guarani with classical Arabian inflections. Of course, who, who wouldn't have spotted that from a mile away? <laughs> and, and, and we know that the languages in these books even though we're seeing it translated for our eyes in something that is English, we know it's not because 22 letters and only two punctuation marks is neither English nor Spanish, right? So right. It, mm. the language is also incomprehensible. We don't even know what that is. <laughs> it made me think very briefly that is it sort of like a, um, like the universal language that we haven't even discovered yet, like the binary, ver like you know how like ones and zeros is, what ones and zeros is to code for a computer. This language that we do not know, the 22 characters and two punctuation marks is like the binary of all other language, all other reason. Like I, it, it took my head in that direction, even though he doesn't come out and say that, but hmm. yeah. And, and I liked the fact that the, he wrote the footnotes too. <laughs> the footnotes mm -hmm. are part of the text. I, I, I think that was, that was quite clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the final footnote is, oh, by the way, someone did a version of this that's a lot more elegant and better. Another philosopher <laughs> came up with a better way to create an extended metaphor for the universe, guys. This whole thing you read, pointless. <laughs> like, right. That's the final footnote. Someone did it better. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. One of the other things I liked about it was the religious part of it. Because he's so sure, like... It's, it's, it lends itself to a reading of a belief in intelligent design, that there is an intelligent design here. However, if you think it is for the edification of man, if you think it is for like man to then go on to heaven after being in this like plane, nope, those guys were wrong. Anyone who tries to use the fact that this is intelligent design and that there is a greater being to control others or control knowledge, they're zealots and they suck. Um, but that doesn't mean that there is no God. However, when you die, it's just sort of bleak. You just fall into the nothingness. And it's like, it's such an interesting thing where it's like the divine exists, but it is not here for you. And there's one section that made me think he was criticizing people who rely on science to replace the divine. Let me see if I can find that line where it almost sounds like, is this like a metaphor for quantum physics? Like there's a part where I need to like just find it and read it because it was extended, but it was really good. It's, um, it's the feverish library part. Uh, where's the feverish library? Yeah. So it's, um, they speak of the feverish library whose chance volumes are constantly in danger of changing into others and affirm, negate, and confuse everything like a delirious divinity. This like a delirious divinity, this idea that these things sort of just change in a way that breaks the patterns you thought you had understood made me think a little bit of something like quantum physics. So then these words, which not only denounce the disorder, but exemplify it as well, notoriously prove the author's abominable taste and desperate ignorance. Sort of like poo-pooing like that train of thought as well. And that seemed to me sort of like um, physicists who uh, replace God with physics 
are also ignorant. Like there's like, that's how I read that. I don't know if you guys read that the same way, but that's where my mind um, jumped. Uh, I don't know yeah. much about religion, so. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how you read that, Andy, or was it another one of like, I missed the joke here? Yeah, it was, it was one of those guys. Yeah. Because <laughs> the idea that like the forms and the text just sort of jump around and um, create a disorder to something you thought had order, right? right? That's kind of what quantum mechanics is. And then he's saying, the fact you thought there even was an order is why you're an idiot and why this is clearly intelligent design behind our comprehension. Like, that's what that line is saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm banging through my notes quickly. You guys got to say more. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've not got a lot to say. I just like it. I just yeah. like, right? Like, I don't know. But, right, I don't know how I feel of it as a story. I think it's a wonderful toy. We have a comment from Tato Diaz that says, the secret of alchemy written on the surface of jade. If you want to expand on that, I'd love to see um, what, what exactly you're getting at there. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm getting it, but a little bit like the story, like a missing part of the point. Maybe there is no point. Like, <laughs> Borges insists. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I will say when I started reading it and he got into how the hexagonal rooms are aligned and how many shelves are per room and the hallways in between and the doors. And I, I was immediately like, oh no, oh no, oh no. But once he, he was done explaining the actual construction of the library, it was a lot more fun. Yeah. You see, as an engineer, I quite enjoyed the construction of the library. I liked, <laughs> I liked visualizing it. I, was, I thought, oh, I can get my head around this. But, I could. Yeah. I, I could not care. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I was way more into the esoterica. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Lots of that going around. Yeah. Anything else you guys would like to say about it? I wish there was. No. Yeah. Just. Man, there's there's a reason. Uh, we still keep reading Georgie Borgie, right? Yeah. Just, you know, well, the same thing. Like, Gerald Gerald seems unimpressed with the, the whole premise, right? But mm -hmm. you, you got through the story. It was, a, it was a quick little story that did a lot of things. It's, it's a quick little story. It's, it's and, and there was that sort of tantalizing glimpse of under for me anyway, the tantalizing glimpse of understanding. And, and I think it's a bit like the carrots on the string in front of the donkey. So you, 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 the, fur, the, the more you get towards it, the more it moves off. And um, so, and, and I, I suppose it, it's interesting to, to sort of realize that that's part of the point. And, and I see, yeah, it, it's I I have real difficulty in in trying to um, put in words how I feel about it, um, how I how there's something that I don't understand, and and because of I don't understand the sort of philosophical and the um, uh, the sort of religious aspects of of things like this. I, I'm, I'm sort of missing the, the point of it. And, and I think I, I, I sort of get to a point where I think, no, I, I'm, I'm going to disengage with it. Um, but I've come back because we missed last week. I've come back to it several times and, and think, let's, let's just let's have a run at it and see if we can get to, get to grips with it. And, and yeah, it, it's not, um, it's, yeah, it, it's got, it's, I suppose it's it's a bit like a um, like a sand pit, isn't it? <laughs> that you can do so much in it. You can you can sort of play with it, and you can make things with it, and you can you can have fun in it. 
but in a, and of itself it's just a sand pit it's, it's just a, a sandbox it, you i i don't get anything uh, after a while i get bored with playing in it and, and go off and do something else mm, yeah so um tato said that he had said the secret of alchemy written on the surface of a jade it's from the alchemist comparing the ideal of deduction of an entire study like language by higher understanding simple yet overly complex in essence you know it, it's funny that he mentions the alchemist because one of the gerald when you were saying earlier you prefer a story with a protagonist and a plot there is a way to sort of have characters explore these themes, right? So instead of having this person write a letter, you follow this person's story on their journey to find meaning and you can still pull some of this from it, right? You can pull these thoughts. But hmm. even so, how do you then, having that sort of conflict that drives the story, the, the conflict I guess would be that search for meaning and then having some sort of climax and resolution, Maybe it's not exactly what the author here was going for because he, maybe he doesn't want you distracted by the individual's struggle for meaning. Because hmm. again, this story keeps saying over and over, there is something divine. It is intelligent design. We're here. We have a chance to try and understand it, but this isn't for us. It's not for our edification. It's not for us to go to heaven. It's not for us to have some sort of afterlife or to like, we are not the definition of this thing that we are a part of. Um, so I wonder if you make a protagonist, if you rob the story of that point, right? If you have a hero, then maybe you confuse the, the theme. You would have to very, you would have to have the library reject the hero as a hero to make that point. I, I, I can see that. Yes, I can, I can see. Because, because at the end of the day, it's a letter and it's a description. And, mm -hmm. and it's interesting for that but but i i can't i can't enjoy it as a story i can't i i i, I want to i want to be taken on a journey in a story i want to be I, I want to um you know associate with the characters i want to um get some sort of some sort of sense and i think it, i think it's I think there has to be. It's, it's like it's like reading some science fiction or some fantasy. That I like to have some sort of grounding in my world, and to have, if you were to have like alien creatures in an alien world um, with alien world rules, I couldn't unless you put somebody like me in that situation. I, I wouldn't be able to um, interact with it, and I think it's it's like that. It's it's just it's just this this sort of strange place, and I you know I enjoyed the mechanics of it, and and the the imagination of it, but I didn't enjoy it as something that I could I could sort of run with, and 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 uh, like I would with a, a, a normal story. Mm. Okay, are we ready to rate it, I think? I think we're... Yeah. Yeah, I guess. making some of this. Andy, do you have anything to add or are you ready to rate? No, I think I'm ready to add. Just, um, did I say I'm ready to add? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It is hard Good. to rate though when it is an actual story. Right, well, cause well, it's a... It, in as much as it's a story about things, it's a story about not having that thing. It's a story about not understanding all the way, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to strive to understand it. And, like, the more you strive, the more little bits you can peel out. But, like, there's not there's not an, an end. There's not an encompassing, like, ah, yes, I have... I've circumscribed this story, right? You can keep teasing out a little bit and like, oh, you know, this, oh, this line is a reference to this train of thought. And mm -hmm. I don't know. it's cool. I would like to do the other thing also sometimes, but it's how do you write a story about not understanding otherwise? I don't know. So that's just real neat. I like to I like to think about it. 
and I'm giving it a five. Okay. I'm coming in at a 4.5 because I've given things five in the past that I enjoyed more. <laughs> but it's, it's so hard, right? When you're like, this is story 195. Like after a while, it's like, I don't know. 4.5. Yeah. <laughs> it's a three from me. There were okay. words and, and and the punctuation was good. I liked that. It's, um, I Yeah, it, it's, it's that sort of, I think... Pieces like this, stories, quotation marks, pieces like this make me feel a bit stupid or or highlight what I don't know. And and that's that's not a good thing. I I I'd I'd rather it would I'd rather have something that made me stretch to understand, but this is just that stretch too far and and, and I just couldn't couldn't get to grips with it. So mm. It's it's a three, but it was it was interesting. Yeah, I mean, as we've said, making you feel like you can't quite get the full meaning is the point. But I understand what you're saying. We're like, after a while, yeah. it's like, right? But I just want to enjoy a story. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, okay. but maybe five times was too many times to read it, though. You know, <laughs> like you read it, <laughs> read it once, maybe twice. It's a little, then it's like this much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, it's. I, I think. I, I think you could be right, actually, because by the fight, by the fifth time, I, I was coming into it not liking it and not <laughs> <laughs> almost not wanting to succeed. <laughs> just, just wanted some confirmation bias that I didn't like it. So, uh, maybe, maybe you're right. Okay. Okay. So, what are we reading next week? Oh. Um, um, we're reading something, aren't we? Um, I a story that's very close reading. to your heart, Gerald, that you picked out especially <laughs> for us. <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, next week, we are reading Sweet Scoundrel by Diana Jin. Maybe. I think so. Okay. Yeah. But before you go, share with us your metaphor for the universe in our Facebook group, The Literary Roadhouse Readers. Help others search for meaning in the sacred literary text by leaving a review on iTunes and supporting our podcast expenses at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, share this podcast with a rival philosopher refuting your entire life's work in a single footnote. Until next time, read a good story. <laughs> Very good. <laughs>